Yo, Elliot, I wanted to know what your thoughts are about omens. I'm referring to animal omens or symbols you constantly see, whether in dreams or in real life, like a type of synchronicity. The other night I was up late and I saw an owl in front of my house standing on a power line. I stood out there for a few minutes looking at it. Then I saw it go for a kill in front of me. After that, it went back to the power line. It stood there for a couple minutes and then flew away. I dream a lot about seeing this owl too. I was wondering what your thoughts are on these types of occurrences. Is there some kind of omen or am I making something up superficial that should be forgotten like a bad dream? This is, this is just my opinion on this. There was a time when I was very caught up in this and I, and I was silly about it. I would look, I thought everything was an omen, right? And I go look it up like, oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean, right? And I understand now why that is said to be a false idol. It can quickly become your God. And that essentially is worshiping the creation instead of the creator. You're looking at what's being presented to you and you thinking that's telling me what I need to do. That's telling me something that's happening. That's giving, you know, these omens are guiding my life. So now you're letting owls and alligators and shapes of clouds in the sky to dictate your life. And that's a very easy way to get ungrounded and lost, <laughs> right? But I do believe that there are signs. There are signal graces. This is, the, this is the Catholic way of describing it, right? So now I can, I can bring it into, into my Catholic faith, right? Because a lot of things that happen in the world, like the law of, the law of um, what do they call it? You know, uh, abundance, you know, what is it? The secret law of attraction and stuff like that. These things aren't necessarily wrong uh, or untrue. I'm going to say wrong. They're not necessarily untrue, right? These omens might necessarily be untrue, but how much stock do we put into it? That's really the question. How much stock are you putting into it, right? Like, I like astrology because I see there's a truth. Like, wow, these patterns really exist. These are legitimate patterns. They really exist. So I don't think that they're lies, I th but they're not total truths either. All the, none of these things are true per se but they are symbolic of something. They're, they they point to something. It, it's a general sense about something, but it's never, right? Like if you go to a psychic and they're like, oh, on this day at this time in this place, that's going to happen. You, they're lying to you. But if they're like, oh, there's, a, I got a sense that there's somebody coming into your life at some time. And it may be because of this reason. Now they're being respectful to you. But anybody or anything, even these websites where they tell you what these omens mean, that is garbage. They can give you a sense, but they can't tell you anything. Astrology cannot tell you anything. It can give you a sense. Omens cannot tell you anything. And you can't Google something and expect it to give you an answer. It can give you a sense. The whole point is that you have to, my, my opinion is, hold these things at a distance Notice them, but don't indulge. Don't entertain it to any great degree because you can very easily be manipulated. And I do believe that if we live as, the spirit, as a manifestation of the spiritual war that's going on, we are in a battle. There's a confrontation. Demons will very easily recognize the susceptibility of some people to be carried away by symbols and signs and omens and like and stuff like that and they love this because then you start putting trust in those things and you stop putting trust in god that's what a demon wants you to do they want you to forget about god god didn't god's not giving you the law of attraction you did that god didn't tell you about this thing that's going to happen the owl did <laughs> right and so even though it's all God and God is mathematical, God is, is pattern. That's why we call him the father, father, pattern, paternity, pattern, God, God, the father is a pattern, right? What are patterns? Patterns are predictable. God in many ways is very predictable, very predictable. God, this whole world, they say we live in, scientifically, they say we live in a fractal world. What is a fractal? A fractal is how, and the whole world really is fractal. It even says it in the Bible, right? 
all of creation is found in a single cell. Everything is in one drop. The whole ocean is found in a single drop, right? It's just a fractal of the big thing. So again, I'm, a, I'm acknowledging that there is some validity, right? That's probably the best way. Like I say, there's some validity to it, but it can also be a stumbling block. Do not let it be a, st be a stumbling block. Now, how I know that these, these signs and symbols are from God is as a Catholic, there is a promise of signal graces that come to those of us who are in a state of grace. And there are promises, right? I don't wanna to get too deep into it, but there have been promises made to us that if we live a certain way that you will receive certain signal graces, right? I was listening to Father Ripperger give a talk on grace today. And he was talking about how when we're in a state of grace, we're essential, God then is indwelling with us. And so in a way we get the mind of God and, and not only that, but God can more easily work with us to give us these graces because we become him. The Orthodox call it deification. It's you, the, the true, the, the clearest image of God is reflected in us when we're living in a state of grace. The imago Dei, that's the, uh, that's the term that I think it's a Latin term. The image of God, the image of God is much more pronounced when we're living in a state of grace. What does that mean? Free from mortal sin, free from uh, venial sin, free from error, right? When we're living for God and God indwells with us, this state of grace allows signals to be given, right? This is why in the faith, if you study some of the lives of the saints, in a, they were kind of psychic. I think of like Padre Pio. And then you might say, and this is where like, you know, Christians disagree. In, in the Bible, there's a part where Paul, this is how you know that there's demonic influence associated with these, but they could also be graces from God. It could be either. The, there's, a, there's a point in, I don't know if, it's, if Acts, the book of Acts, where Paul, he, he comes into a city, he and his students, and nobody knows who they are, but this little girl who has a demon in her, she has a spirit of divination, points them out as like, you are Paul who was with Jesus. What do you want to do with us, right? She starts calling him out, and he's like, whoa, whoa, how does girl know who I am? He recognizes her way. She, oh, she has, she has a demon of, of divini divination in her, right? A lot of these like psychics, back in my, back in my um, new age days, I used to consult with a woman, very in touch woman. But when I met her, I saw her life. Like she was giving me, she was telling me all kinds of things about myself. I was like, whoa, she knows something. But when I met her in person, because we used to talk to her on the phone, I saw right away that her life was ravaged and she was, her whole life was, destroyed by demonic influence. Her home was a mess. She was overweight. She was over, always sick. Her relationships were a mess. I was like, how is this woman delivering all these, all these, all this truth in essence to me? And she was smart too. She said, don't ever take anything I say as truth. She's the one that told me that just see it and deal with it at far. But in order for her to have the senses that she had, I think she was dealing with some demons. And so you could see in her life, wow, her life was a mess. Like this little girl that St. Paul saw, this girl, her life was a mess. And the, the leaders of the city were using her to get information. So this was a, this was a spirit. This was a, this was a, a bad spirit. This was in this girl. At the same time, you have like Padre Pio, right? Who's a Catholic saint. He was a man that was in a state of grace. In fact, if you read his biography, he was like a unique little boy he was very sick as a little boy and he gave himself over to god and he wanted to be i think they call him padre pio because he wanted to be like uh pope Pius. the pope was his like his hero just think about this kid he wanted he looked up to Pius, and so he wanted to be called pio and so that's the kind of guy he was but he was receiving visions there's lots of Catholic saints that receive visions, but the thing is that because they were living in a state of grace and they had the, the purest reflection of the Imago Dei on their heart, they knew that it was a signal of grace from God. I think of um, St. Teresa of Avila. 
I've heard about her. I've heard about St. John of the Cross. Um, there is, uh, what's her name? Um, I can't remember, but there, there are a few of them. And so these are people who are in a state of grace. And so they even, there's a long period of discerning of what they're saying is from God or if it's from a demon. And so one of the things I love about the Catholic faith is that they don't take anything for granted. They do investigations. You, when you guys hear me say things about these people who are mystics or about these apparitions where Mary shows up, they don't just take those for face value because anybody can say whatever they want. They go into a deep investigations and, it, and, it, and everything is kind of held at a distance first. And then at some point they say, okay, you know, we've done enough, enough investigation. This is what it is. So what I'm saying to you, you're asking me, do I want to know your thoughts about omens? It happens, they're valid, but you want to be careful about where they're coming from. I'll also reference, uh, uh, Brianna Shav, Ignatius of Brianna Shav, that I've spoken to you guys about a lot. Saint Ignatius of Brianna Shav, he was one of my first, you know, people that I would read his stuff when I became Catholic again. In fact, he's Orthodox, and he would always say to his monks because he 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 led monasteries, so he would work with these monks who spent their whole life in prayer. Monks and hermits, they would spend their whole life in prayer. If you spend your whole life praying and fasting, you're going to see stuff. <laughs> you're going to have visions and stuff. And you don't always know where those visions are coming because Satan and the demons like to attack people who are on that spiritual path. So he would tell all of his monks, he said, if you, he would warn them too. He said, if you go off and you fast too much, and you spend too much time in solitary, you know, solitary, because that's when it will happen. You're opening yourself up to, for attack. He says, be very careful of what you believe in your thoughts and in your dreams and visions that are coming to you. Be very careful about them because a, there's a good chance that they're not from God that, and that you're under demonic attack. Here's another thing that I would just point out also, and I know you're asking about omens, but I'm also talking about, you know, there are people who spirits will come to them. In the Bible, you always notice that when a spirit comes to say uh mary right when when gabriel angel gabriel came to her they're always shocked and in awe right i think uh um who bows down and drops their head to the floor uh i think jacob right oh and even peter when jesus first approaches peter peter recognized jesus right away right he didn't see just a man peter saw him right away and when jesus walked over to him peter like dropped himself to the floor and said I am, a, I am a sinner. Don't come any closer. I'm a sinner. That's the sense of feeling that usually overcomes someone who's in the presence of an angel of the Lord or has come from on high. It's this sense of, boom, I'm not worthy. What is going on right now? And there's a sense of like, you know, when Adam and Eve, uh, when they took, the, they took the fruit and all of a sudden they were ashamed, they started covering themselves up. It's that sense that comes over us that like, oh my goodness, I, like for the first time in my life, because you're in the presence of pure goodness, first time in my life, I feel, I feel guilty and dirty, right? I was talking the other day about how I used to just be prideful. And I was so proud and I was like, nobody could tell me about my sins and you can't judge me and stuff like that. It wasn't until I was approached, I, I, not in the same way as these people, but the Holy Spirit came upon me in some way. And for the first time in my life, I felt ashamed. I was like, ill. I am ugly. I am disgusting. I am full of all this dirt, right? I, I see the spots. And so that's the sense that's going to come over. If you have, if something, if someone comes to you and you feel great, like, oh, wow. Hey, hey, angel, or, you know, hey, whatever, right? These people who do like uh, psychedelics, hey, talking alligator, right? Or even Eve in the garden when the snake and this talking snake comes, right? You see a talking snake and he's like friendly. <laughs> you see, when, if you have a vision and it's friendly and you're like, hey, what's up, guy? Tell me something. Then you have a good, there's a good chance that it's not from on high, it's from down below, right? So anyway, again, I'm in a talking mood today, so I'm talking a whole lot. He says, I dream a lot about seeing this owl. I was wondering your thoughts on whether these types of occurrences is a type of omen or something made up, something superficial that should be forgotten like a bad dream. Be discerning, right? Here's the thing also too. 
a litmus test is is what's being is what's being shown to me going to help me glorify the lord or is it helping me glorify myself that's another one demons will come to you to help you glorify yourself that's how you know it's not of the lord but if it comes to you and it's about of course you'll feel humble right away it's about glorifying the lord if it's about glorifying the lord you know okay this may be this may be legit but if it's about lifting yourself up glorifying yourself it's probably not from all high and i'll just i'll say this one last piece there is no question that god speaks to us through our dreams it's the craziest thing man i know this is true and this is why it's important to ask like this is something you should do ask god pray bring this to god in prayer right instead of asking me <laughs> i'm just a dude i'm just a dude giving my opinion about stuff who likes to talk and has a lot of ideas read a lot of books but i don't know i don't know anything bring this to the lord bring this to god in prayer and say lord if this is of you this is a beautiful way to pray if this is of you please reveal it to me and show me the path you'd like me to take what do you want me to do about this if this is not of you please take it away from me pray pray that to him every night until some clarity comes to you if all of a sudden you recognize that these these dreams disappear and the owl disappears then you realize oh wow god just protected me from this this could have been bad it could have led me down some crazy path where i start buying owls or i don't know doing something weird or it will come to you in a dream like it did to me i'll share this with you it will come to you in a dream what that's about and it'll be very clear to you what that's about i'm not going to give you my specific dream but i had i prayed the other night that God will give me a dream that I will remember for, uh, in other words, a part of my prayer, and it's a prayer, it's a, a prayer that I repeat, it's written, uh, is help me remember the dreams that are from you and forget the things that are not when I dream. Help me, Lord, to dream uh, or to have dreams that are from you and to remember them in the morning, something like that. And sure enough, that night I had an important dream and I don't dream very much. I haven't really dreamt, dreamt very much lately. I had an important dream and I knew the meaning of that dream instantly. It wasn't like, hmm, what do I make of that? Hmm, what does that mean? It was so obvious in my dream what God was telling me that it was like, boom, wow, okay, I guess I got what I asked for. So that's that on that, dude. Hope that helps, dude, done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business and with women if that sounds like you then just go over to my instagram account and dm me the word king k-i-n-g my team will get back to you with the details if you're able to message me today i can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me so dm me the word king on my instagram and i'll get back to you with the details right away